It was funny when Antec reached out to us and introduced itself, acting like we might not know who they were, since we've been using Antec cases since the original Silver Landboy in the early 2000s, then later the Antec 900, and even the Antec Skeleton. Our reply to their DM was pretty simple after looking at their list of products. Do you guys make anything actually good? After a period of silence and confusion, we decided to just go out and buy an Antec case for ourselves. So we bought Antec's new P120 Crystal. The P120 Crystal might look familiar. And when we sent a link to Dare Bauer, his response was, I'm surprised it took someone this long. From the Newegg listing, it looked like a copycat. But once we bought and received the case, we realized that there's a bit more to it than just trying to look like a Lian Li O11 Dynamic. Today, we're reviewing the $100 Antec P120 Crystal. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's Tough RAM RGB Memory, available from 3000 megahertz up to 4400 MHz in 8 gigabyte by 2 configurations. The Thermaltake Tough RAM uses 10 addressable RGB LEDs for bright illumination and comes in both black and white kits of memory. Learn more at the link in the description below. The Antec P120 Crystal takes obvious inspiration from the O11 Dynamic. And again, looking at it just on retail pages, it looked like an exact copycat. It almost looked like a one-for-one -one clone. So we bought it for that reason. We bought it thinking it would be a, how does the O11 Dynamic copycat perform? And it still kind of falls into that territory, but there are some significant differences where it's between Antec cutting corners for cost and just differentiating itself a bit. And it's kind of hard to thread that line and figure out which side of it they're falling on. If we give Antec the benefit of the doubt, maybe they're just trying to differentiate the case. Realistically, just knowing manufacturing and Antec's limited abilities right now, we'd imagine it has more to do with limitations of manufacturing and tooling. But either way, the key differences right out, uh, right out of the gate are that, first of all, the top has no ventilation, uh, and instead has a power supply shroud up top. So the power supply is in the main chamber of the case. In fact, there's only one chamber of the case. That's one of the biggest changes and deviations from the original O11 dynamic is that the O11 is wider than this and it's got two chambers. So this does try to do something different. Also to Antex credit, it's $100 instead of $130. Every time something over here is rattling every time I hit the table. So it's, it's $100 instead of $130, makes it a bit cheaper. And there's some obvious places where the cost savings came into play like, again, following a more standard ATX build. But overall, the case is at least 30% unique from the O11. Now, the rest of it, where it's not so unique, is in the obvious layout, the configuration of a side intake that's not completely, uh, completely new, but the fact that the whole rest of the case looks like the O11 dynamic, including even some of the, uh, the internal part of the chassis, that's what makes it feel a bit like a copy. But there are differences to talk about, like this one in the review. We've got Patrick's build notes to go through and some in-depth thermal testing. It's a bit difficult to do thermal testing on cases like this because it doesn't technically come with any fans, and our thermal tests rely on stock fans. So we did a somewhat standardized approach between this and the O11 Dynamic, and then we've got the O11 XL in there just to throw it in. So I think that introduces this pretty well. The P120 having some design elements that it has so freely borrowed from the O11 dynamic that doesn't make it a bad case. In fact, it's quite common. But it's just about whether it brings new value. And dropping the price isn't always good enough, so we need to really look at this thing and see how it does versus the obvious source of inspiration. The features that the P120 shares with the O11 family are obvious. Full coverage glass side and front panels, side and bottom intake rails for fans or radiators, and a single exhaust fan slot like the XLs without a single stock fan included. Like the O11 cases, the motherboard tray is further away from the side panel than the radiator mount is, the inverse of the usual arrangement with cable management space at the front of the case and limited room behind the motherboard. This makes the P120 and O11 more compatible with most EATX motherboards and SSI EEP motherboards, which can simply overlap the side fan mounts. That short list covers most of the functional similarities between the two cases with the much stronger bond being that the cases just look alike. Despite external appearances, Antec's case interior has some major differences from the O11s. In general, the Antec P120 is much more conventional. 
That applies to the case dimensions, which are more like a standard mid-tower than Lian Li's squat, cube-like form factor, as well as the trim. For starters, the door is a hinged glass panel. This is one area where Antec may surpass Lian Li, since O11 side panels are plain squares of glass that can be lifted off the case when the top panel is removed. Antec's door has a spring-loaded latch at the front that makes it much more convenient to open. The downside is that the latch takes a bite out of the side panel, interrupting the clean vertical lines of the case and adding a bit to manufacturing complexity and costs and, of course, adding one more thing that can break. Our other small nitpicks are that the hinge pins are about the same length, so both hinges have to be lined up at the same time when reinstalling the door and that the door sometimes can't be shut without pushing down the latch. At the time of writing, it's back to working perfectly again, but sometimes it just stops. Antec went to the trouble of putting springs on the chassis to keep the door from rattling and to cushion it when closing, so when it does work, there's a satisfying firmness to snapping the door shut. In the end, the toolless door makes it moderately easier to maintain a system in the P120 than in the O11D, but it's also a little bit less secure in some ways. Neither of these things particularly matter, though. The power supply shroud is perhaps the most noticeable difference from the O11. One of the O11's most unique features was placement of the PSU bay, which was stuck sideways behind the motherboard tray in a separate compartment. Placing the power supply there made uncommonly large cable management chambers possible and a hard drive cage that could be used actually as a secondary power supply. Not something we've ever really found a need for, but something that is an extra feature in the very least. The P120 lacks all of that and the versatility afforded by it. With a simple power supply enclosure stuck to the roof of the case, it's almost more of an afterthought. It's similar to the older way of design. It doesn't extend the full length of the case as a traditional power supply shroud might, which leaves space in the front for either fans or hard drives. The only reason a shroud needs to be there at all is to provide a place to stick loose cables, which is lacking elsewhere. So it would have been an interesting value add if Antec had made the shroud removable rather than riveting it in. The cable management channel along the leading edge of the motherboard is good, but wires can't be hidden in the bottom of the case or along the side intake vents. The shroud remains the main container for cable clutter here. Intake for the power supply shroud pulls from the interior of the case with no option to flip the power supply over and pull external air. That's because the P120 is completely unventilated on the top. Unlike the O11 Dynamic, it's an interesting divergence since the O11 was specifically designed for liquid cooling and maximizes its opportunities for radiator mounting, or at least 120mm wide radiator mounting, by ventilating the bottom, the top, and the side alike. We're not sure why Antec would choose to skip the top radiator mount. It's either for aesthetic reasons, cost reasons, or because they are reusing some other type of tooling, which would kind of fall under cost. Fan mounts elsewhere in the P120 are less restrictive than the 120mm only ones in the original O11, with a 120 or 140 rear exhaust slot, and a 120 or 140 support for both the side and bottom slots. One habit Antec has apparently kept from the P8 days is dedicating a whole power connector to one or two superfluous white LEDs. In the P8, which is one of the worst cases we've ever reviewed, there was a tiny light-up Antec logo. And in the P120, there are two illuminated rings around the USB 3.0 ports in the front. In case you're trying to find them at, at night or something, silly as it is, it's at least potentially useful. And they used SATA rather than Molex this time. Other case features include a vertical GPU mount, modular hard drive bays, and a GPU support. We didn't test the GPU support because who cares? And we didn't test the vertical GPU mount because we've proven multiple times that air-cooled GPUs should never be mounted vertically against a glass panel, at least at the proximity in this case, and for liquid-cooled GPUs, it's irrelevant. As for the hard drive bays, they're actually kind of neat where they are. Two metal containers that fit in front of the power supply shroud, one or both of which can be removed to make room for more fans or radiators, is nothing new, but it's meaningful, or at least more meaningful, in a case without a full-length power supply shroud that could potentially make use of a 360mm radiator. An SSD can also be installed on the underside of the bottommost hard drive bay, even with a hard drive on the inside, so we're maximizing some of the space here. While on the subject of the small quality of life features, we should also praise the full-length front ejecting filter on the bottom of the case it's better than the O11 Dynamics bottom filter, although the O11 Dynamic XL's side ejecting filter is even nicer. We found the case to be solidly constructed and surprisingly easy to build in. We came into this expecting a poor ripoff, but 
it's really surprised us in a lot of ways and it made the review a lot harder. As for cable management, there are plenty of cable cutouts, none of which have rubber grommets, but maybe that's a positive. I've personally hated dealing with rubber grommets since day one. I think they're a waste of money. I know what they cost to put in a case and it's just not worth it to me. That said, Patrick is less strict about them and we recognize that a lot of people do like them to try and hide things that I just don't care that much about. Either way, back to the other features, Antec adheres to the NZXT school of screw tightening. So every thumb screw on the case was torqued to hell and back and required a screwdriver to loosen, eliminating the toolless nature of a thumb screw. The whole point of one. Nothing was permanently damaged, at least unlike the NZXT cases we received recently, but our final complaint is one that might be specific to us. The complaint is that installing a fan on the bottommost case in the rearmost slot requires removing the case legs, since they cover about half of the rearmost and frontmost fan placements, and we'll talk more about that in the thermal section coming up. Doing that once is fine. Doing it a couple times to test or retest different fan configurations becomes extremely annoying, and this could be improved. We tested the P120 much differently than we usually do for a few different reasons. First of all, like the O11 Dynamic and the O11 XL, the P120 crystal doesn't come with any stock fans, and therefore it's not really fully fair to test it truly stock. We used to do fanless tests for cases, but we eventually realized we should throw some in there and somewhat standardize it. Second, we bought this case specifically to see how it compares to the O11 Dynamic. So we wanted to mirror the tests that we did in the O11 Dynamic almost two years ago. For the first reason, the lack of stock fans, we tested the P120 the same way we did with the Lianli O11 XL by taking the three Noctua fans that we use for standardized fan testing, that's two 140s and one 120, and placing the 120 in the exhaust slot and the two 140s as side intake for one of the tests and bottom intake for another. In a traditional case, the 140 mil fans would be placed as front intake for the standardized fan test, but there's no front intake in the P120 or the Lian Li cases. So we can compare them to each other, but it's difficult to really compare them properly across the stack with quote unquote standardized fans, which have become in this instance unstandardized in placement, despite being standardized in hardware. For the second reason, to compare specifically to our old O11 Dynamic results, we took three Lian Li Bora fans that we used in the original O11 review and tested them once as three by side, once as three by bottom intake, and once spread evenly between the rear exhaust, side intake, and bottom intake. These are the three primary configurations we used in the old review. We didn't test the negative pressure setup that Antec depicts in the P120 product page because our test system doesn't use liquid cooling and because installing more than three of our own fans is not really comparable to anything else on the benchmarks. For the same reason, we'll be comparing the P120's results with the Noctua fans primarily against cases on our standardized fan chart that use the same three fans. Finally, we're skipping noise testing this time since the noise levels are determined by what fans are installed. The case has a few concessions to noise damping, but the glass side panel is sealed along with the edges with soft rubber strips and there's no top or front ventilation, so fan noise is in the very least directed away from the user. We'll start with a CPU torture test for just the Antec P120 Crystal versus the relevant O11 configurations, and then we'll look at the rest of the comparative data. In the torture test, the P120 Crystal CPU temperature averaged 59.5 degrees Celsius over ambient, with the Noctua side intake configuration and 56 degrees with the Noctua bottom intake configuration. That runs counter to what we'd expect in isolation, but looking at the GPU thermal results in a moment will make it clearer what happened here. Compared to the O11 with the three 120 mil Lian Li Bora fans installed, the best to worst order for CPU temperature with these configurations in the P120 was side intake at 54 degrees over ambient, bottom intake at 58 degrees DT over ambient, and the mixed arrangement at 62 degrees Celsius over ambient. The mixed arrangement isn't exactly the same as it was in the O11 dynamic, since the O11 has top fan slots, but no rear fan slots to speak of, unless you count the 80 mil one, and the P120 has a rear fan slot, but no top slots. The fan we used as a rear exhaust in the P120 was in the rearmost top fan slot in the O11, still as exhaust. Side intake was also the best in the O11, but with a significantly cooler 49 degree average temperature that allowed it to outperform the P120 crystal by a wide margin. Bottom intake was actually worse for CPU temperature in the O11 dynamic, with an average of 63 degrees Celsius over ambient, but the P120 has a slight advantage in that the power supply will always pull some exhaust from the CPU, even if cool air isn't being pushed actively and directly into the CPU cooler. 
The O11 bottom configuration also favors the GPU a bit more, something we'll talk about in a moment with our GPU results. The mix configuration, though, isn't directly comparable, but the 58 degree Celsius average for the O11 is cooler than the P120's average, and that makes the O11 the winner in two out of three configurations, as well as the case with the best overall CPU temperature in any of the three configs, but also more unique features and compartmentalization are on the side of the O11. This next chart shows the comparative data, but is presented with fans that are technically not stock since the P120 doesn't have a stock set of fans. The testing here shows the P120 with its Noctua and three Bora fan configurations, making it not directly comparable to stock fan tests, but we still wanted to illustrate where it lands as that's what we did with the O11 Dynamic originally as well. The best average CPU temperature out of the torture test we ran was 54 degrees Celsius over ambient for the P120. That's not terrible, but given that it's got higher end fans in it, it's not impressive versus the other cases. The P120 is equal to the stock Meshify C, but it's disappointing given the knowledge that the Meshify C ships with only two 120 mil fans and is vastly improved in its temperatures when more fans or better fans are added, which you can see at the 47 degree mark higher up the chart. The P120 with three relatively good aftermarket fans didn't push past our database of stock configured cases. The next data shows only the P120 and O11 for GPU thermals. The GPU and the torture tests did better with a side intake configuration over bottom intake, the inverse of the CPU results. The side intake average was a very cool 49 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient, while the bottom intake average held 59 degrees DT. This is what we were referencing earlier in the CPU section. The CPU performed worse with side intake than bottom intake because in the side intake configuration, airflow was moving in the intended direction from the front of the case through the GPU and CPU coolers and out through the top exhaust fan and power supply. Exhausting heat from the GPU through this route, as well as allowing it to boost higher, means more heat passing through the CPU cooler, especially radiative heat off the backside. The other equally important part of this equation is that the bottom intake configuration sucks. It's not good. We push the intake fans as far to the back as possible to line up with the GPU die, but the case legs half block the rearmost slot and aren't very high off the table surface to begin with. The bottom intake is restricted enough that even though it blasts the GPU die directly with cool air, other fan configurations end up better. The O11 Dynamic held the best result at 48 degrees, better than the comparable 50 degree bore as a result of the P120, but the P120 is overall acceptable in this testing if configured in any way other than bottom intake only. Putting three 120 mil fans in a side intake configuration for this test was the best for the CPU and GPU temperatures in both cases, and the O11 had better temperatures in both categories, despite the P120 being okay overall. The comparative chart is next, although again, less of a focus point. 49 degrees Celsius for GPU temperature with the knock to a side intake fans was the best case scenario for GPU torture temperature, which is decent compared to the full range of results we've gathered for case testing. It's tied with the H500M mesh, AKA one of the good H500s, and the editors can have fun trying to figure out which H500 that is, we must continue to point out that this is the best temperature that we achieved using three fans that are a step above what usually ships with cases. But it's still good news for the P120 that it can keep pace in GPU cooling with cases we've reviewed positively in the past, like the Corsair 570X. We have two results each for the Firestrike and Blender tests. Since we decided to run these tests with both the knock to a side and bottom configurations, both Firestrike benches scored almost exactly the same average GPU temperature as the torture test in the same configurations, backing up the results that we measured there. The side intake was, again, much more favorable for GPU temperature at 49 degrees Celsius versus 60 degrees Celsius over ambient with the bottom intake option. We avoided comparing the Noctua fan configurations to stock cases for the torture test, but since we don't have other standardized fan configurations to compare here, we'll take a look. The O11XL is the closest point of comparison since it also doesn't include fans, and we therefore also used the standardized Noctua fans to test it. And it was only slightly better than the P120 in this test with an average GPU temperature of 48. The case is also larger, but overall they're close. The O11 Dynamic with three 120 mil side intake fans installed and noise normalized to 40 dBA was worse at 53 degrees Celsius Celsius over ambient, but we already know that those same fans on the same position perform better in the O11 Dynamic than the P120 when they're set to the same speed as each other. It's the noise normalization that hurts the O11 Dynamic here. Compared to the chart as a whole, 49 degrees Celsius is great, putting it on the same level as the H500 mesh or the RV02, both of which are cases that do come with a decent complement of stock fans. 
Apparently, putting good fans in a case makes it perform like other cases that also have good fans in them. But aside from that, this at least means the P120 has decent cooling potential, depending on the fans that are installed. The Blender GP render had the GPU temperature at an average of 22 degrees Celsius, delta T over ambient, or 26C with the bottom intake rather than side intake. The bottom intake results are hardly worth discussing at this point, since they're worse in both CPU and GPU temperatures. The side intake result is almost tied with the O11XL's 22 degrees using the same fans, and again it beats the noise normalized O11 Dynamics result of 25 degrees, although the O11 Dynamic performs better in like for like testing as discussed previously. Running on the CPU bumps the average CPU temperature to 37 degrees with the bottom intake and 39 degrees with the side intake. This is the only test where bottom intake performs better because this is also the only one where the GPU is under no load whatsoever. So it doesn't matter if air is being pushed straight up from the GPU cooler into the CPU because that air isn't preheated by the GPU. The O11XL with the same fans averaged 37 degrees CPU temperature and that's cooler than either result in the P120. The dynamic fell in between the P120's two results at 38 degrees, again with the fans normalized to 40 dBA, giving it a disadvantage. All of these are relatively good temperatures compared to the rest of the chart, but for the final time, we'll disclaim that the other cases on the chart were tested with their own stock fans, not the high quality aftermarket ones that we use for testing the P120 and O11. The last case we reviewed from Antec most recently was the Antec P8. So we started out with low expectations for the P120. The P8 performed poorly, but its greatest defense was being a boring version of the same chassis that about six other cases were using that year. It had the feel of a cheap rebrand from an old company by PC hardware standards that was unwilling or unable to keep producing the weird concepts that it did in the good old days, like the skeleton or even the Razer Cube. The P120 Crystal, to its credit, is a mixture of both solving that problem of getting stuck in, in just buying pre-existing frames and rebranding them and also doubling down on it. It's solving it because it's properly different you look at it, and it is, at least in several ways, a unique chassis, meaning it's of a, a limited breed. You're more looking at O11s, not literally everything in the $50 price class like the P8 was. You have to remember that tooling is often reused. The P8 was reusing tooling that almost every other manufacturer, in quotes there of cases, was using that year, including companies like Zygmatech, and I think maybe Scythe had one, or Sharkoon, that was it, Sharkoon. So, this is a bit different in that regard. It's still taking a relatively exotic chassis that just so happens to look the same as an existing one, but it's different enough. The O11 Dynamic is not prohibitively expensive. It's $130. So, and that's for a case with no fans, but is still a, a mid-range case that's been one of our go-to recommendations for superb build quality and actually pretty good airflow once you get the fan configuration set up you know, after you buy the fans, obviously. So it's been a good case for that reason. It's hard to compete with. There's a vast array of good quality $90 towers as well that define the included fans, airflow competitive category. Look at the P400A, for instance. But the O11 Dynamics stood apart, and it also was focused on liquid cooling. Now, here's where we get into the differences between the two. The P120 Crystal is actually not that bad. We thought, just from looking at it on Newegg, we thought that it would be more of a slam dunk of this case is just a copycat, and that it'd be a question of, but how good of a copycat is it? It's different enough, though. So this does not really have the focus on open loop support that the O11 does. We wouldn't recommend between the two of them that you buy this if you're planning to do multiple radiators or any kind of even remotely complicated loop. If you're doing a single radiator loop, sure, whatever. If you're doing a closed loop liquid cooler, same answer, whatever. But although it's less convenient. So the O11 Dynamic does better there than the P120. If you're doing an air-cooled system, the P120 is actually kind of fine. It's never quite as good as the O11 Dynamic, but if you really need to save 30 bucks, and for some people you do, we can't say absolutely don't buy it because it doesn't do anything really horrifically offensive. It lacks a top radiator mount, it moves the power supply into the main the only compartment and it puts it at the top but other than that if you need a an o11 clone for some reason but not the o11 this is not wholly unworthy of consideration if the o11 didn't exist at all we could see probably being 
pretty positive on this, potentially leaning more on the recommendation than we are here. The only reason it's hard to give a firm recommendation is because the O11 exists, and it is very competitive, and it did set the standard. But uh, this one is still reasonable in some ways. So we hope Antec continues making cases at this level of build quality. The build quality we would classify as lower than the O11s, but still sufficient, better than the average case. And for Antec, that's a tremendous step up from where it was just a couple of years ago, where uh, I'm frankly shocked that it's still in business. The way Antec was operated the last couple of years, it looked like it was doomed. And it still might be, but uh, things are at least looking like they have a couple of products on the market now that are worthy of consideration, whereas before it was just dead. It, it, people who didn't know who Antec was from a few decades ago, the like guy said, my first system build was in Antec, and so was my second one. People who don't know who they were, might just think Antec is another one of those rip-off AliExpress style companies that you find so commonly on Newegg these days. But it has real tremendous history. Antec was the first company to make actual art for a cardboard box for a PC case, something you might not know. When I went to Fry's Electronics, this was the only company that had a design on its cardboard box. And it wasn't just a brown box. It was also, uh, to our knowledge, the first company to do a black painted cardboard box for its computer cases. All the rest were just plain, unpainted, unbranded brown boxes on the store shelves. So Antec's got history, but the last few years, it just looked like it was just another fly-by-night company, and that was really sad to see. So this is a move in the right direction. It's a copy. We'd like to see Antec's next move be something genuinely unique that isn't garbage. That's the hard part. So you're getting there, Antec. But anyway, that's the P120 Crystal. It is, uh, it's not bad. It is, in fact, fine. We don't give it a firm recommendation, but we're also not saying stay away. It's, the only reason to buy this is basically if you look at it and you go, I want that case, it's not bad. Just get some fans. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs>